We're not going to replace the majority of ground delivery. That, that's not our intention. We want to offset the quick trips with small items that we can perform mm -hmm. more efficiently. This is about mm -hmm. 50 times more efficient than a gas powered vehicle, probably 10 times more efficient than an electric car. If you want sushi by drone, now you can get it, especially if you live in Queensland, Australia. Drone delivery may seem very ready player one. It's sci-fi, it's rumored, it's promised, but maybe not actually quite real. Well, that's not actually true. MANA is doing it in Ireland. Google's making it happen in a few locations around the world. But particularly in Australia, where Wing, an alphabet company, has just hit a very significant new milestone. Today, we're chatting with Jonathan Bass, Wing's head of marketing and communications. Welcome, Jonathan. Thanks for having me. Hey, super happy to have you here. Now, you've been delivering for two years. I've written about that before. It's pretty impressive, but there's a new milestone. What's the new news? All right. Well, we've actually been delivering for, for four or five years. I'd say we, we oh, started with some trials in, in 2017, 2018. The two years is is an ongoing service. So we launched a number of ongoing services in 2019. So that's that's what the two years means. But but we've been we've been delivering quite a quite a bit beyond that. Uh, the news today is uh, the, the first rooftop delivery service. So we, we've co-located uh, at a shopping mall in, in Australia, uh, Grand Plaza. It's a vicinity, vicinity uh, shopping mall, and we're delivering off the roof. So it's, it's real estate that's not being used uh, for anything else. And we've used it to stage a delivery service uh, for a number of the, uh, the merchants in the mall. What's the significance of that? What does that mean? Um, and how does that differ from what you were doing previously? It, it moves us a little bit closer uh, to the merchants. It allows them to es essentially extend their retail environment you know, out into the community. Uh, that's been especially important and valuable uh, di during the pandemic. Uh, Logan, uh, the, the city in Australia where the, this, this mall is located, has has experienced some some lockdowns recently, uh, pandemic related lockdowns. So it allow it keeps a connection between uh, the local business and the community, even when the community can't necessarily come into the store. And I'm guessing previously you had products sent to maybe a distribution center or something like that, and and droned out from there. Or and now you're basically right where the retailer is. Is that correct? Yes, we're still doing that. Most of our facilities we we have we either prepare uh, food on site or we have uh, we have inventory on site. And when the order comes in, we distribute it from the wing site. Uh, th this one we're we're co-locating at at the shopping mall next to the merchants. How long does it take? Like if somebody orders something, they order sushi. I know that's one of the things you're offering. Uh, how long does it take from pressing send it now to it arriving at my house? It, it typically takes, you know, 10 or 15 minutes from order to delivery. I, our record is two minutes and 47 seconds, I think. Uh, and, and so there, there's so it depends on the product. If it's a food, uh, if it's a meal and it has to be prepared first before it's delivered, it, it takes obviously a little bit longer. Uh, the flight times are typically, you know, one or two minutes. So what, what's powerful about that is it generally arrives in, in, you know, very close to the state that it was delivered. So very fresh, hot if it's coffee, still frozen if it's ice cream, uh, fresh if it's a salad or sushi. Uh, so, so we tend to be really appealing to merchants who care about quality. Your drones are not slow, right? I mean, 110 kilometers an hour, that's what, 65 miles an hour? Around 70 miles per hour. Yeah, 65, 70 miles per hour Very is, is very the top nice. speed. What's the process? Um, uh, clearly, I'm not going to Amazon.au or <laughs> .com or whatever. What's the process? So where do I order? How does the order come through? Uh, how does a drone get dispatched? So you download an app, uh, either either Android or, or, or iOS app. Uh, you pull up uh, your you pull up your the, the, you pull up the menu essentially on the app so that the available merchants you select the item you want uh, then a, a map will pop up you select a location uh, usually your your front yard your backyard maybe your driveway uh, and then you you order uh, and and we take care of the rest so the the order is fulfilled on our end uh, the drone takes off. It, it navigates to precisely the location that you selected. It drops the package uh, attached to a tether. Uh, it does a little shimmy and releases the package and that's it. Uh, it, it actually, we're, we're working with Terry White 
um, which is a, a chemist, uh, a, you know, a pharmacy in, in Australia, and they're doing over-the-counter medication. And, we, and the, the users have especially liked that they know the minute it's arriving. So we, we give them an ETA and they can go about their business in their home. Uh, and especially if it's something like if it's if it's a med medication, they might not want it sitting out for, for more than you know, 15, 30 seconds. And so they know exactly the minute it's going to arrive and they can just go outside exactly when they can expect to pick it up. Sometimes we'll update the ETA when the, when the drone takes off, you know, because the preparation can vary. Uh, but but in any case, they know exactly when it's going to arrive. This episode of Tech First is sponsored by my creator coin, Dollar Smart. Don't think of it like Bitcoin. Think of it like a backstage pass at a concert. Get some at rally.io slash creator slash SMRT to pitch me on podcast guests, earn weekly rewards, get social amplification, and get or give feedback on strategy and plans. Is this almost like an Uber where I can see my Uber coming on the map and <laughs> coming along on the street? Yes, it is very much like that. It is very much like that, except it arrives a lot faster. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> no no stoplights, what... no traffic. Uh, none, none nice, of that nice. I want to understand what this feels like to a customer. I, I, I want to experience it. I want drone delivery right here, right now. And I want to know what that feels like. What are your customers telling you? So uh, the, the customers love it. Uh, you know, I, I think the, the, the folks that we talked to that haven't experienced yet express a lot of the same sentiment. When are you coming to my town? Uh, but, but they generally enjoy it. I think they wish that we had more items to offer. Uh, I think they wish that we were in more places. Uh, but the ones that have been able to experience it, and we're doing thousands of deliveries a week uh, in both Canberra and Logan in Australia, they say they've come to rely on the service. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. What about retailers? How are they feeling? Uh, retailers like it. I think it's a it's a new conversation uh, that they can have with their customers. Uh, it's it's it you know gives them a, a reason to contact them. It, it's been really especially helpful in the pandemic. I mean, even after the pandemic, I think a lot of retailers have experienced that people don't come into the the stores quite as often. So mm -hmm. it's it's a way for them to connect to their customers and and really what's kind of a new retail environment. What can you deliver? Uh, how big is a drone? Uh, what can what's its carrying capacity? The drone weighs around 10 pounds. It's, it's mostly made of foam and plastic. Um, and the, the, the package, we can typ typically carry up to about three pounds. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, interesting. So you're not shipping a sofa. <laughs> you're not shipping uh, something of significant size or weight, but you know, a meal, absolutely. Maybe you order two or three drones if you have too many meals, too many people over or something like that. Uh, is it noisy in the environment? Uh, I, does, do people complain about drones whizzing around their city or is that pretty normal to them now? It was when we first started. When we, when we first rolled out uh, in our, our first suburban trial in 2018, we got a lot of feedback about the noise uh, and we redesigned uh, the propellers, uh, made a number of modifications to the aircraft and made it much quieter, lower pitch, which was almost as much as important as, as the kind of the decibel level itself. So it sounds more like a, you know, like an attic fan or, or a, an air conditioning fan, like a, a, a noise that you would expect to hear and less like a traditional drone with a higher pitch sound. And then we reduced the, the decibel level, which was also important, uh, by about 30, 40 percent. And so we've, we've gotten very little feedback since then. Uh, pe people, people really appreciated that change. Uh, so so that's, that's been really positive for us. And, and that really has been what's allowed us to expand a lot in, in the Australian communities. How have you managed to do this successfully? I mean, you're in three major locations. You're in the States as well, in one particular city. It seems to be working quite well. You've hit some recent milestones, not just delivering from the mall and from the store, but also in terms of number of deliveries that you've achieved on a weekly basis, monthly basis, and total. Uh, we see that Amazon, you think Amazon announced this first, and Amazon is a retailer. Amazon has every incentive to make this work, and yet they've kind of flailed. They haven't really been successful. What's the difference? I, I think they'll figure it out eventually. Um, I, I, I have faith that they will. And, and really, they, they pre-announced it. They announced it you know, before when everyone was just sort of starting to work on the project. Uh, but I, you know, it, shortcuts, uh, you, you've got to walk before you 
walk before you can jog, before you can run. And we, we started very early, I guess, 2013, 2014 testing. Uh, our first, we did a rural trial, I'd say in 2017, and then a, a more suburban trial in 2018. We did a lot of test flights uh, in, in, in those locations. We did test flights in Alaska before we went to Finland and then up in Northern Finland near the Arctic Circle to, to make sure that we could fly in cold weather. We have an R&D facility where we, we simulate we simulated rooftop delivery before we we did this launch, uh, so there's a lot of work that goes on behind the scenes. It it it, it there are no shortcuts to launching a service like this. But then as you as you as you get more experience operationally, uh, it becomes easier and easier to expand. The regulators get more comfortable with what you're doing when you're doing thousands of deliveries a day with no incidents, and the community really likes it. Your your permissions to grow tend to tend to uh, tend to continue and increase. So there are really no shortcuts. Uh, you, you mm -hmm. just have to go out and, and start offering the service, uh, incorporate your learnings and go from there. I had no idea you started way back then, 2013. That is amazing. That's impressive. That's a long-term project. You're talking basically a decade probably before you're in full you know, uh, scalability and, 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 and growth mode. And we'll get into that. Uh, I want to talk about states. Um, you've got a city that you're up and running in. Uh, when can Americans in Seattle, San Francisco, New York City, all these other places, Miami, expect to be able to get drone delivery? That's probably our next conversation. So we're not we're not quite ready to announce. We do we do have plans to expand in the United States that we're not quite ready to announce. Uh, but but I do look forward to having that conversation with you before too much longer. It is complex, right? I mean, there's a lot of regulatory stuff. There's permissions and all that stuff to, to be done. And then, of course, there's boots on the ground. What's that look like? Where is it coming from? Where is it going? Uh, where's your drone servicing station, your refueling or, 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 or uh, recharging station, all that stuff? So I look forward to that next conversation. Maybe we'll end here. Um, project out a little bit for me, maybe five years in the future. Maybe, I don't know, however long you want, but how big can this get? How big a percentage of our economy or maybe percentage of the things that I want shipped to my house? How significant can this get? Well, it, it, it's significant in the sense that, you know, delivery and transportation are so massive. So, you know, we can carry three pounds. So we're not going to replace ground delivery. We're not going to replace the majority of ground delivery. That, that's not our intention. We want to offset the quick trips with small items that we can perform mm -hmm. more efficiently. This is about mm -hmm. 50 times, our vehicle is more 50 times more efficient than a gas powered uh, vehicle, probably 10 times more efficient than electric, you know, an electric car. So it's, yeah. a, it's a highly sort of energy efficient way to do delivery, but you're right, we can't deliver a couch. We're, we're not gonna deliver you know, anything over three pounds, four pounds. So, mm -hmm. you know, but there, there are a surprising number of, of deliveries that occur over a five, six mile range, which is roughly our range uh, of very small items, you know, replacing trips to pick things up from the store, uh, which, which are massively inefficient and unsafe. Um, so so I, I think the potential is, is, is vast, uh, but mm -hmm. I wouldn't call it a disruptive technology. I think it will, I think it will augment ground delivery. Uh, and be more constructive uh, and additive than disruptive. I really like it. I look forward to the day. I mean, Wednesday tomorrow is uh, Wendy's Wednesday for me. And, you know, classic single with cheese and a medium chocolate frosty. That's my order. And I look forward to being able to get that from a drone. So anyways, thank you for your time, Jonathan. Thanks so much for your time, Jonathan.